Um, welcome, welcome to our session on the what, the why, and the how of employee journey management and journey designer. I am your host and moderator, LaShonda Hart, um, and I am joined by my esteemed colleague, Lucy, Lucy Curran, and we're actually from the product management team of employee workflows. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I have a safe harbor statement. Legal makes me put this here, but in case we talk about any future forward-looking statements, please don't make your, your decisions based on that. But everything that we're sharing with you today is, um, is, is um, part of our Tokyo release, so which has already been, um, been released. If we do talk about any futures, we'll just make sure to point those out to you. So as you know, we have these live on service now events. So please be sure to, to check out um, our upcoming events and sign up and register for those. And thanks to our team for putting those links out in the chat. You can also um, scan using your, your um, mobile app um, camera to, to check out our events. A few housekeeping items before we go. Obviously this session is for you. Um, we have um, muted all lines to start out with. Um, we have a lot of content to get through, but please, 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 we want to make it interactive. So put your thoughts and chats um, in the, um, the chats. And if you do have a question, please use the Q&A feature. Um, and our team will be monitoring those and answering those. For those questions that we cannot answer um, during this session, we'll make sure to follow up with those and include it in the, um, the follow-up presentation that we post. As you see, the session is being recorded um, and we will post that to the ServiceNow forum after the session. And after the session, you will be prompted with a short survey. So thank you in advance for completing that. Your feedback is very, very important to us. So we're gonna start out with a quick poll so we can further get to know our audience. We'd like to know, are you using lifecycle events and or journey accelerator to manage your employee trans, um, journeys today, or I'd like to say transitions as well. This can be onboarding, offboarding, um, transfers, promotions, any type of complex or um, cross-departmental um, journeys that your, your employees may go through. This helps us to understand, and obviously the, the detail that we're gonna cover today is with our newest release with Tokyo, Journey Designer. So it'll be good for us to add a little additional commentary for those that may not be familiar um, with, with our solution before. Excellent, I see it's a, it's a good mix. We have a good number of folks that, are, um, that have heard about it, but we have a good number that, are, that have not heard about it. So we, we'd love to tell you a little bit more about it. And thanks, Mitchell, we'd love to, to um, sh show you what we have. Okay, so I'll go ahead and end the poll. I think we have a good, good subset there. And moving on. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, my, I'm LaShonda Hart on the right-hand side. I'm a senior staff outbound product manager I'm with ServiceNow and I support the employee workflows team um, across all of our neighborhoods. And we'll, we'll talk about, I should say all of our products around our employee journey management neighborhood. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. I'm also joined by my colleague, Lucy Curran, who will actually introduce herself um, who will give us her actual, um, who will actually give us the demo today. So what is employee journey management for those that are not familiar? When we think about from onboarding to offboarding and everything in between, um, that's what we consider employee journey management. We, with our solution, we provide guidance, support, and clarity to employees when it matters most. So just think about those life's those big life events like joining a new company, there's a lot of things that goes into that and a lot of different departments that have input um, into that employee's onboarding journey. So our goal with our employee journey management solution suite is to provide guidance not only for the employees, but also for the managers um, who, who are going through that as well. So when you think about when your people experience these, these major changes in their lives and their careers, they often look to their managers and their um, HR business partners and their organization as a whole to provide that guidance and support to them to add clarity, you know, kind of move the, remove the blockers, if you will, as they're navigating, um, navigating these life changes. So by providing your employees with the right tools to help them move forward with confidence and feel 
empowered and that there's you know, being that they're supported. We believe that you know, this is a contributing experience to the overall um, employee experience. And it not only boosts morale, but also productivity. We have a um, great quote from Josh Burson for those that are familiar. Um, he's highly regarded HR um, analyst in, in the HR industry. And he says that employee experience is not just an employee strategy. Companies with great experience simply outperform in every way. So when you take care of your employees, they take care of your company. I think we can all attest to that, that when we feel valued, we, we are all, we're constantly giving that 100 plus percent. So with our, our employee journey management, as I mentioned, it helps um, employees through those, navigate those complex processes. So you'll be able to help your teams navigate complex processes across the enterprise. And that's the big differentiator with ServiceNow is that we help the workflow across these multiple departments. It's not an onboarding or an offboarding. It's not just an HR or IT. Um, it doesn't only impact those departments. It, it can impact multiple um, parts of the organization. So with employee journey management, not only are managers able to set up journeys with tasks and to-dos and even suggestions um, for their employees across the enterprise to help foster that collaboration, but it also, from a corporate standpoint, obviously helps with those, those cross-departmental um, workflows. But employees really benefit from this in-moment guidance at the times when it matters most for them. So they're not having to go and, and search for information or try to find support. We're proactively giving that to them with our, our um, journeys. So ServiceNow actually provides journeys in various ways. We have what we call these enterprise journeys. So these experiences that go beyond HR. Um, we also provide that end-to-end -end visibility for the manager. So they're in for the admins as well. So they have full visibility and insight and control over that employee's journeys. And it can also be personalized. And that's where the manager's input is highly, highly, highly valued and needed um, because the manager is, is the boots on the ground, if you will. We do provide pre-configured templates. Um, so if you're not familiar, we do have a ServiceNow store where we have included and built out and delivered what we call these employee experience packs. They're basically blueprints where we um, give, you, um, give you the ability to use these out of the box journeys, test them out in your test environments and decide um, if, it, if, if it provides value for your organization. But the whole goal is for us to reduce, reduce that time of value for you. So a few more things when you think about employee journey management as well, it really helps employees navigate those complex moments, as I mentioned. They work across the enterprise, it automates and monitors those steps for the employees, the agents and other system administrators, um, system administrators and systems when you think about it. So there may be learning that a you know, new hire needs to, to do. They may need to go request their corporate card as an example. Um, they need to order equipment. Our employee journeys are also personalized and relevant. So again, we empower departments and owners to really drive that functional and team specific parts of the journey. And really it's about making it a more personalized experience for your employees. Lastly, you're able to, in the flow of work, everything as we mentioned, we'll say it's, it's in the flow of work because you're delivering those experiences in an omni-channel manner. So it doesn't matter if it's via desktop, um, the mobile phone, or um, if employee, you know, managers and employees can see those tasks and information wherever they need it. So a little bit more about pr prior to Tokyo. So Tokyo is our current release um, that has come out. Prior to this, um, employee journey management, and I should mention employee journey management does require the HR enterprise SKU. So, um, so, so that and you, you can utilize, utilize it. But employee journey management used to consist of life cycle events, which are the cross-departmental um, um, workflows that we mentioned, as well as journey accelerator, which are those manager built action plans. There were two separate um, tools that we provided and they were supported by what we call listening posts, which are basically allows you to have, take a pulse as your, um, your employees are going through this process. Um, take a pulse survey to see how they're feeling about that particular um, um, function or action that they're completing. 
It's also supported by uh, learning posts um, where we're able to embed the learning in their journey. So as a new hire, if I need to take um, a particular learning course, providing that link to the employee through their journey without having to go to a different um, to go to a different, um, find where to go in that different system. We have that link embedded right in that journey. But what, and all of this, I mentioned all of that supported by the employee experience packs. But what we heard from our customers, it wasn't a really um, good experience for the employees or the managers. They were having to go to two different places to actually navigate um, to lifecycle events and separately to Journey Accelerator. So we wanted to make that um, experience a lot more um, unified on behalf um, for on behalf of the users, the managers and the users. Um, and we really wanted to take the opportunity to rethink the user experience um, for lifecycle events and really make it easier for the managers to create um, these great journeys for their employees. So what you're seeing now is prior to Tokyo and what we've done with Tokyo is we've simply added a wrapper to the top. So you'll see here where it says journeys, we're bringing together all of the components of a journey for both managers and employees by creating an end-to-end -end experience for those employees and with input, additional input from organizations, departments, and managers. So now, instead of having to go to two different places, so the, the corporate onboarding or the corporate um, journey, if you will, and having to go to the manager um, created journey accelerator, it can now be com combined for that unified experience. And it's also a unified experience, of course, for the admins as well. So journeys can not only empower the managers um, by serving as an engagement tool to help them go beyond completing um, various transactions, but the managers can easily know that their employees um, know where their employees are and provide proactive guidance to them. And it also helps to drive employee productivity and engagement by using insights and recommended actions as well as nudges as a part of this journey. And you'll see that when Lucy does the demo. The employee journey management features also has, as I mentioned, those multiple um, solutions. So during the demo, you'll see where Lucy points out um, how learning posts and listening posts can help support um, your employees as they go throughout those journeys as well. So a couple more before I hand it over so you can see the demo live in action. Just a few quick facts. I won't read all of this to you, but a few things. Um, as I mentioned, customers must be on HR, um, our HR service delivery enterprise SKU um, to take advantage of Journey Designer. Um, it is currently available out um, on the store and in the Utah family release early next year, um, it will be part of the Utah family release. For customers that are using lifecycle events today, we do have some great guidance um, with our uh, journeys migration guide. And you'll have the hyperlinks um, not only here in the, um, in the deck, but we'll also post those links to the resources later in the presentation. But we, we really are excited about your um, you know, thinking about using these to help not only enhance the managers and employees experience, but really to, to help um, innovate your organization and, and help minimize a lot of the complexities that go into um, these employees' journeys. A couple of highlights here, just um, before I give it, hand it over to Lucy. Um, for Journey Designer itself, we, um, as I mentioned, created this unified journey for managers, employees, and, and mentors that, um, that uh, Lucy will point out. And it does consist of lifecycle events and Journey Accelerator. And then we have the supporting cast of learning post and listening post. Admins have that guided setup, so you'll see a little bit of the configuration. Um, during the demo, you'll also see um, as Lucy goes through the demo from a man, both of, um, from a manager perspective, how they're able to, to go through that journey for their employees. And lastly, employees can absolutely see an overview of their journeys as well and be guided through that process. So with that, Lucy, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Lashanda. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucy Curran. I am the product manager over our employee journey management features. Um, and I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to start by kind of showing what this experience looks like for a manager. And then I'm going to switch over to the admin side of things and actually show you how you can build out one of these journeys for your organization. Um, now, before I get started, I really want to kind of uh, clarify a few things. 
Um, so I'll, I'll largely be talking about this new uh, Tokyo feature called Journey, Des Journey Designer, where we actually are bringing together the, the front end experiences or the employee manager experiences of our two existing products, Lifecycle Events and Journey Accelerator. Um, and so to kind of conf like you know, clarify what those two things are and what uh, they should be used for. Um, so the Lifecycle Events uh, product is our kind of workflow engine behind any employee journey. So um, think about your more complex journeys that require uh, many different uh, parts of the organization to kind of complete activities um, that are required as a part of that journey. So when you think about onboarding, think about all the forms that need to get signed, think about the compliance trainings that an employee has to do, X, Y, and Z, right? Lifecycle events can be used to facilitate that, that workflow. And then we layered on Journey Accelerator for those uh, kind of functional and team specific components of any journey. Um, and so Journey Accelerator was built to be a little bit more flexible, lightweight, right? So you can kind of add on uh, sets of tasks into a journey and you can assign them based on a person's audience or their kind of user criteria. Um, so when you think about onboarding again, think about those department level activities that any new hire needs to do. Um, or think about kind of the team specific activities that the manager can then add on top of that. Um, and so just want to clarify that um, those were built as two different kind of user experiences. And now in Tokyo, those are combined into one. Um, and with that, I will switch over to the demo. Awesome. Okay, so I'm actually logged in as a manager named Bud, and Bud is in his you know, employee center here, um, and he's going to navigate uh, to this to journeys here, or he can go there from his uh, My Active Items widget. Um, and he's landed directly into this uh, journeys page. You can see that he can create a new journey, um, but most importantly, right now, he sees that he has some journeys that need his attention. So he's going to jump into this one. He has a new hire named Roy who's onboarding and he sees that this journey is at risk, right? So let's see what, what uh, Bud needs to do here. First, he can see here that he actually can go ahead and send a, send a welcome note directly from the journey. Um, so he can actually go ahead and you know, send Roy a quick message and there's already a template that's been provided here. I'll show you how you can set this up um, from the admin side, but he can modify it if he needs to, or he can go ahead and just send it. Awesome. So that's done. Um, and he can go ahead and kind of work through his next, uh, next task he needs to complete. But I'll kind of scroll down and I'll, I'll show you kind of the core of, of the journey. So uh, this is where the life cycle event and the journey accelerator plan come together, right? So he has all of these stages here, right? They can be coming from the life cycle event um, and or the journey accelerator action plan down here. Um, so this is our, our new UI for that, for these journeys um, going forward. Okay, um, he it does have one thing that's overdue. So he can click there and he can just go ahead and, and open this up um, and he can you know, go ahead and complete it if it's already done. Awesome. Um, he can also go ahead and add mentors here. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Adela to be uh, Roy's mentor. Um, and so when I send that, then um, Adela would get a, a notification that she's been assigned as a mentor. She can log into her employee center and she can see this, um, this journey as well and, and modify the journey. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, go ahead and uh, edit the journey. And as a manager, uh, I want to add a new task to this journey. Um, so I can go ahead and go down here and I can start adding new tasks um, to this journey specific uh, to my team. I can create and manage task templates. Awesome. So I have, you know, a specialist on my team, Julio, who, you know, every new hire needs to go and kind of shadow him and what he does. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this template um, I can make some modifications if I want. So I'm going to go ahead and add a due date. Awesome. And I can add that task into the journey. And when I'm done, 
oh, actually, I'm going to kind of scroll down here and, and comment on a few other things. Um, we also have this recommended learning section. So this is powered by our learning post application. Um, so you can actually bring learning directly into uh, this journey, right? So I want uh, Roy to complete uh, some of these trainings that are available to me, um, and I can go ahead and add that course. Similarly, I can actually uh, see kind of how satisfied uh, Roy is with his journey. So this is powered by listening posts in which you can uh, trigger pulse surveys through the journey, throughout the journey. Um, and so as, uh, as Roy goes and kind of completes these satisfaction scores, um, they can be surfaced to the manager. Uh, and this is a configuration that I'll also kind of touch on. Additionally, I can go ahead and add a quick link if I want to do that. For the sake of time, I won't do that. And I'll go ahead and finish editing. Awesome. Um, so, so this is um, our journey's experience. Um, lots, lots of different features and, and functions in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch over to our kind of admin side um, and show you actually how you can build this out. Um, and I can, I'll switch back here to kind of you know, show you where those, those changes are reflected. Okay. Great. So now I am actually uh, logged in to the uh, platform, right? And I'm actually first going to start off with our guided setup. So we have built and provided a guided setup with Journey Designer that will walk you through the steps of setting up one of these journeys. So I'm going to navigate here um, and be landed into this landing page. We can learn a little bit about uh, Journey Designer and uh, kind of the dependencies that you'll need to make sure are installed and the rules that come with it. But I'll go ahead and get started. Awesome. So I'll point out here that everything in this bucket are the required activities for setting up a journey. And then as you move down, uh, these are some optional kind of add-on features that you can, can layer on as well. So things like those quick links and the learning posts and the listening posts, personalized message, et cetera. So I'm just going to currently start uh, in setting up this journey. And I am actually going to set up a voluntary separation journey. Um, so we actually, on the ServiceNow store, we have an employee experience pack uh, for voluntary separation. So with that employee experience pack comes a voluntary separation lifecycle event. And there's an employee experience pack for uh, the, the journey accelerator configurations as well. So I've actually already installed those into this instance. So we have that lifecycle event built out and we have kind of the journey accelerator components built out and I'll show you how you can build the journey with those two, two things. Okay. Um, so first step would be to set up the journey configuration, right? Um, and you can uh, get some high level information here on when to use lifecycle events, when to use journey accelerator. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. And I, I do apologize, um, they're remodeling a bathroom next door. So I hope that it's not too loud. <laughs> okay, great. So I am gonna call this my voluntary separation journey. Great. Um, I need to set up a type, um, and I've already set up a few uh, types here. So this is used. This value here is used for reporting. Um, it's used for filtering, right? So let's say you have five different types of offboarding. Um, you can kind of classify them all as uh, using this type that will make it easier for filtering, searching, classifying, and things like that. And here is where you actually choose that journey source, right? So any journey can be either just a lifecycle event just journey accelerator, or it can be both. So for this one, I'm actually gonna show you how you can create a journey using both a life cycle event and journey accelerator. Um, so I'm gonna navigate out to my uh, list of available life cycle events. Um, and so we'll see here as part of that EX pack, there's one for voluntary separation. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and embed that here. Um, and just a reminder, these, these life cycle events, um, there's a lot of uh, documentation available on community, and I'll share some more some I'll share some more resources in case you're completely new to employee journey management and you need a, a full background on what lifecycle events is. Um, I'll make sure that 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 information is shared. Um, but lifecycle events allows you to build out those those complex workflows behind behind the journey. 
And then we uh, will need to pull in our journey accelerator plan type. So again, um, I've already kind of installed uh, some of these uh, or an, an EX pack into this environment. And so we already have this offboarding plan type that is tied to kind of a set of, of journey accelerator uh, templates um, with tasks embedded in those templates. And I'll kind of, at once I'm, I've set this up, I'll kind of switch over and show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can define the owner here. Um, because there's a life cycle event, uh, we're gonna have the owner of this journey be the opened for on the life cycle event case. And I'm going to give our uh, journey a description for our employees and managers. Sorry. Okay. Great. Um, and now I'm going to switch over to the owner permission. So this is where you can define what a journey owner, most likely the employee's manager, can do on this journey. So I showed kind of on the demo how you can, the manager can add tasks, can send that personalized message, quick links, et cetera. So this is where you kind of define what the owner and the mentor can do. So for this voluntary separation, um, I'm going to enable the, uh, the manager to add mentors, to edit the journey and view that satisfaction score. Um, they can add recommended learning, can send a personalized message, um, and then they can actually go ahead and configure the template. You can configure the template for that personalized message uh, here. And so I have one already set up. Um, it's a pretty simple um, kind of email template that you can, can link out here. And for the mentor, um, I'm not going to give them any permissions for now. I think the mentor can see it, but, but that's it. So as an example for this journey, I'll leave this as is and I'll press submit. And now we have this voluntary separation journey um, set up and it's almost ready to go. Um, I think first I will, uh, I think the most, the first next important step is actually to set up the HR surface. Now for any journey that contains a life cycle event, just like life cycle events today, it needs to be associated to an HR service for triggering, right? So let's go back. Um, so we've done this part and we'll kind of navigate to create the HR service. So hopefully that this you know, page looks pretty familiar to most of you, but I've already created an HR, oh, well, that's not what I thought would happen. Oh, I spelled voluntary wrong. Okay, so I've already set up a, a voluntary separation for journeys. And I will show you, you can, what you can do if you're using lifecycle events today and you already have an HR service, you can just replicate it and make a few small changes. So we have this new fulfillment type of journey. And this is where you can set up and have it uh, be associated to a record producer, right? So that an employee or a manager can actually go and request uh, for this HR service. Okay, and now I'm going to link that voluntary separation journey that we just created. Yep, important step I missed, you need to create it in the journey designer scope. So apologies for that. Um, I created it in the wrong scope. So let's make sure we are in the right scope. LaShonda, are there any questions that I can, I can take? I know this is a lot, but um, might be a good time to kind of start answering some things. I'll answer them in the chat, but there were a couple that I'll read. There one, one just came in, thanks, um, Catherine. Is there any dependencies if the journey type will be customized as well as the life cycle we've been associated to it? So Catherine, I may need, um, you, may, may can, I'm not sure if you can come off um, of mute and ask that if I'm reading it correctly. Is there any dependencies if the journey type will be customized as well as the life cycle we've been associated to it? So are there any dependencies for that journey type? Uh -huh, Lashonda. Catherine here. Hi. Yeah, hi. So yeah, actually, as I checked or as I uh, saw uh, the configuration thing, um, I'm thinking about what if the journey type doesn't have the value that we are actually looking for to um, to configure the 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 uh, 
the requirements as well as the life cycle events, which is, I believe, uh, at the back end, as, as, as mentioned, there are certain workflows that works with it. So um, given, the, given the customization, is there anything that we need to consider as part or any dependencies that will be covered so that when we do a customized journey type as well as with the life cycle events, we can cover that in our configuration or customization? Um, so, so I'll take a stab at that. I'm not totally sure. Hopefully I answer it. Um, so you can create whatever journey types you need, right? So that it, there's no kind of restrictions with that. It's really just a classification record. Um, yep. so, so that you can use however you see fit. Um, and then you can kind of associate that to, to the journey and pull in whatever life cycle event that you have created. Um, does that answer or is there more to that question? So basically, when you when you say that you can just create anything um, given a customized one, how does it impact with regards to the life cycle events? Because I know that uh, the life cycle life cycle events um, has this series of process. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay. and that process will be associated to the journey that we are actually um, creating or let's say building. So yeah, so given let's say yeah that 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 particular uh, life cycle event. Because I'm actually working at the moment with the HR as the um, uh, requirements, and I just want to understand whether you know a few customization uh, there will be a, any restrictions or anything that we need to consider. Got it. So, so no, the life cycle event will as long as you're using kind of the life cycle of uh, you know you haven't customized it too too or I guess can, yeah customize it too too much, then life cycle events should work exactly as it is today. Um, so for some reason it's, uh, there we go. So before you set up a journey, right? You know, you can, you can set up your life cycle event and there's no changes to the life cycle event, right? Um, from, from this perspective, you still need to go in and you need to kind of create this workflow uh, from this builder experience. Um, and then once you're done with that, you tie that into the journey, right? And then those tasks get brought into journey designer. Right, so this journey designer that we're configuring, right? This is kind of layering on, uh, so layering on that new journey, that journey layer, so that we can um, the employees and the managers when they're employee center can see the journey, um, as opposed to navigating to the request page um, or the my task page to complete their lifecycle event generated tasks. Um, but the tasks, but everything should, you know, from a life cycle event perspective, work as it does today from the back end. And that's just the front end that would change. Okay. So basically, as what I understood, only we can add any activity set applicable to that life cycle events, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you add whatever activity sets you need, activities. Um, it all should, should work the exact same as it does with, in today's world or pre-Tokyo world. Thank you. And there is, I'll just kind of call out, we do have a kind of a migration guide um, for our kind of lifecycle event customers that'll kind of show you or, or kind of talk to all the things that you do need to consider if you are using lifecycle events, um, but you definitely can uh, continue to build those out and they will be, uh, you know, very much uh, required and used in this uh, Tokyo feature. I saw that we have a hand up. Lee, do you want to kind of ask your question? Here, let me make sure that we can talk to this. Give me one okay. minute. I just kept getting that banner saying, she's raising her hand. So Lee, if you unmute yourself, you should be able to, to speak to us live. We can, if not, we can just we'll come, come back, back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, I will keep on moving forward. So uh, apologies for that little missed up. I uh, created the HR service in the journey designer scope. Um, and so now it should be set up correctly and we can update it. And now if I navigate back to that journey that I set up, I'm going to need to, I'm going to remove 
this HR service from here. Um, just to, but you'll see that the HR service has been uh, related to the uh, journey configuration now. So um, just in today's world, that HR service, you can connect it to a record producer, right? So employees and managers can request it from the employee center, um, or it can be triggered, that HR service can be triggered uh, from an integration, right? Um, but, but similarly, that HR service uh, would need to get triggered and it would trigger the journey as well. Um, and the last thing I'll point out right here is this can be used as a template. Um, this indicates that the manager can actually trigger this journey from their journeys page. Um, so I'm going to switch back to the uh, to Bud's view and show how he can actually trigger one of these journeys now. Okay. I'll also point out that uh, you know in I completed that that overdue task and uh, so no longer does Roy's journey appear in the journeys that need attention. And Lindsay, before you, um, well, go ahead, I'll let you finish that part. <laughs> and of course, for some reason, now the voluntary separation is not showing in uh, the created journey. So let's navigate back and make sure I. Sorry, LaShonda, was there a question I could go ahead and answer? Yeah, so there's a question from Teresa on with lifecycle events. To do's are HR tasks and with journeys, um, journeys are um, journey tasks. Um, will HR support, will the HR support team be able to see the progress of both in one view or will they need to bounce around to two different tables to see the progress? Um, that's a great question. Let's actually take a look at that. So I'll show you how you can kind of navigate to the journeys um, and we can see, let's look at the journey for Roy. So you can see this kind of high level kind of journey, right? And you can link out to the lifecycle event case and the journey, journey accelerator action plan. Um, and you can see uh, the JA task and you can dive into the activities, but um, unfortunately, right now, there's no kind of overarching progress on the admin side for each journey. Um, you would need to go and navigate out to the lifecycle event case and the journey accelerator action plan. Um, but that's uh, definitely something to consider uh, moving forward. Um, I'll also kind of point out here, because I've gotten this question a number of times, um, the state of the journey will depend on the lifecycle event case and, and or the action plan, right? Um, so that the lifecycle event case will close when all of those uh, related activities and tasks are complete, uh, but the journey itself will not close until both the JA plan and the life cycle event case are complete. And Lucy, while you're hovering there, there was a question that came into the chat earlier about mentors. So here, just pointing out, you absolutely can add multiple um, mentors um, in a journey as well. Yes, definitely. Um, that kind of brings me to, uh, I'll kind of show how you can actually modify the, um, the terminology for mentors, right? So let's say in your organization, you use the term buddy, right, for onboarding. Um, and then maybe for voluntary separation, mentor and, and you know, buddy, they don't make much sense, right? So uh, you can configure that terminology. Um, so I'll show you how you can do that. Um, you can use these header configurations. So these header configurations are used to define, let's go back to our employee center, sorry about that. So if we dive back into this, uh, this journey here, um, you can define all the fields that will appear on this journey. Um, and so, and you can also define kind of the, the header names here, like how these appear to the employee and the manager. Um, and so you can do that by these default heading configurations. So you can, um, you can add new ones, right? Or you can use the default one. So I'll just show you quickly how you can uh, modify this, right? So this is, these are the fields that would appear for um, the journey owner. Um, and you can add new labels. So let's say you wanted maybe the employee department on here. 
Um, so you can go to the HR profile. So you can pick from any of these um, kind of dot walk to any of these fields here, and you can add these um, into uh, the and I'm looking for the right field here. So let's do kind of primary job, right? So you can have the primary job and you can define what that label is that appears here. Um, if you want to modify the terminology for mentors, you can call this buddies and it will update accordingly um, throughout uh, the journey page for those employees and the mentors and the uh, managers. Lucy, there's a great question that came in through um, the Q&A is, what is the use case of using journey over using lifecycle events? Great question. Um, so uh, kind of talked about this at a high level, right? That the lifecycle event is used for, uh, you know, all the kind of organizational components of a journey. So what are all those activities that, that must complete as part of that employee's journey, right? So um, again, kind of like all the forms that have to get signed for them to be there day one, right? Uh, making sure they have a desk, uh, making sure that, you know, IT has set them up with a phone, all of those activities that you want to make sure get done. Um, those are great to be put into a life, into a life cycle event. Um, and then as you uh, think about maybe the next steps with any journey, right? Uh, what are those uh, more, you know, department level activities or those team level activities, or even those activities that are because of a, their, their job role, right? Um, then you can create these journey accelerator uh, plan configurations. And so I'll kind of quickly open up one of these and show you how this works. Um, so here we have a sales employee plan configuration. It is tied to the audience uh, of sales. Um, and it's also tied to that plan type we looked at in the journey. Um, so this one is for new hire, but this could be voluntary separation, right? Um, and then when you come down here, you have uh, weeks, months, and then, you know, any stages you want, and then you can add journey accelerator task templates um, into those stages. Um, so this is the data model for journey accelerator. So um, this is great for, again, kind of layering on those, those activities that maybe are very specific to the department or that more granular, uh, that more granular role or function for the person. Um, these are much simpler tasks. They're not as complex. They're easier to manage. Um, and so when you go and you look at um, that journey that we created, um, you know, these are all of our uh, lifecycle event generated stages. Um, so you'll see things like new hire documentation, background check, those sorts of activities. Um, but we were looking at those kind of week one, month one, month two activities. These are more focused on what does Roy need to do as a part of being in the sales org or what, you know, he needs to kind of have some goal planning sessions. He needs to schedule some one-on-ones. Maybe he needs to do some department level training. You can add learning courses in here as well. Um, and these are kind of controlled at that kind of audience level. So I hope I you answered that question. There. Yeah, I was, I was, let me pause and see. Hopefully that answered the question for our anonymous attendee that posted. <laughs> so there was also a question while you're here um, in the chat on, so journeys seem like tasks. So why set up a journey versus more tasks on the life cycle event? Is it the fact that the manager can add tasks, add the task um, from the employee view, will they know the difference or have to go to two different places? And I think it's very telling where you are now. Okay. Hopefully, I, hopefully we've answered most of those things. Um, mm -hmm. Again, kind of the goal is that you know the employee actually should not should not know where those things are coming from. All he knows is that he has an onboarding journey. Um, you know, he has some some learning he needs to do. He has some some last minute forms he has to sign, things like that, right? But he has one place to go where he can see all of those things. So the goal is to make you know make sure that the the new hire doesn't have to go to two different places to complete two different types of their onboarding. Um, so this, that's a, that is the goal of this, this feature to kind of bring those together and kind of add on, on some, some more features as well. Excellent. We have another couple of questions if you don't mind, Lucy. Yeah, of course. 
So the next one is, um, are their journey specific admin role, are their journey specific admin roles where you can delegate the administration of these journey designers without giving that user the HR admin role? So uh, will you repeat the question one more time? I think I have an answer, no but just want to make sure I don't answer the wrong question. <laughs> so are there journey specific admin roles where you could delegate the administration of these journey designers without giving that user the HR admin role? Yeah, interesting question. Um, great question. So I think what you're talking about is, can we kind of enable non-admins to manage some of these journey templates, right? So when we talked about that, sales onboarding example um you know maybe it's not the admin the admin is probably not the right person to go and manage all of those those templates in the back end right it's the the group in the sales organization that is responsible for that and they should have the, the ability to kind of manage those templates uh themselves and this is where that kind of i guess uh a safe harbor slide comes into play because this is something we're working on right now um, that's coming in Utah. But um, again, don't base any of your you know purchasing decisions on this. But we are uh, enabling non-admins to own journey accelerator plan configurations. What that means is that the admin can go and they can assign ownership to that uh, that sales onboarding plan configuration that we were talking about. Like we were looking here. Um, and this contains all the activities or the tasks that are uh, required for sales onboarding. Um, but again, admin's probably not the best person to own this. It's probably someone in the sales team. Um, so we are working on kind of creating that, that uh, experience that they can assign owners, they can assign an approval process as well um, if they wanna make sure some of that content is approved. And then those non-admins can actually manage these tasks from their employee center. Um, so yeah, more to come there um, and, and happy to answer questions offline as well. Excellent. We have a few coming in. So now you just addressed this one, but so no HR agents are working on the journey case at the back end. So you just explained how it's meant for um, non-admins to manage. Um, so, they can so, sign, but they can absolutely if they, if they needed to. So agents can manage the journey, right? So um, I don't know that I have agent workspace set up here, but we have made changes to agent workspace so that when someone, an agent is, let's say someone calls in about their journey, um, you know, they have a question on it, then that agent will have access to that journey. They can kind of navigate to the life cycle event in the same way they can today, or the JA plan, if that's where the question is, is coming from, and they can kind of advise uh, the employee as needed from agent workspace. Excellent. Continuation from that one, um, it's a hot topic. Um, mm -hmm. When all of the activities of the journey case or when all of the activities from the journey case or if there's life cycle case linked to this journey are closed, will the journey case close automatically as well? Yes, so the, the states of the journey are tied to the states of the, the plan and the case, right? So again, think about this, like they're still kind of the existing same features in the back end with this new layer on top. So that, that journey layer on top will kind of that, those states will be derived from the LE case and the JA plan. So when both of those things have, have completed um, according to their kind of existing rules, then the journey itself will also complete. Excellent, ready for some more? <laughs> sure. Um, so we have a question on how does IT ordering requests be visible in the journey, in the journey page? Can the manager view the IT order request submitted from lifecycle event task here in the journey? So rules are kind of same as they are today with lifecycle events. So if, if you are using lifecycle events today and that manager can see that task, um, then they'll see it in the journey as well. So if we, if we navigate back uh, to what Bud can see, right? Um, I'm not sure what we have set up in here, but he can see that you know, this is an HR assigned activity, um, but if there's something from IT and he has access to it, then he would see IT as an assigned to here um, and he would be able to kind of see that. So those rules like that, like what displays to, a, to an employee or, uh, or an open for a subject person, they remain the same in, in the New Journeys world. Excellent. 
So we have another one about, um, we, we showed how to create a journey plan template for managers to use, but what if the manager wants to create a journey using this template, but doesn't want to use all of the activities in that template? Can the manager kind of choose what activities to use? So admin sets up the journey template, um, but manager says, yeah, this person came in at a, at a level three, so I don't need them to go through that particular task. This is not it. So for our journey accelerator items, um, there are some things, and this is kind of defined on that task level, the admin can say if this can be removed or modified by the manager or not. So some things they might want to say, nope, definitely can't move that, that's required. But let's say, you know, this is something that the admin added and I can actually, um, this one I see, this one I can't delete, right? But if I had the ability to delete it, uh, it would have a delete task and you can delete it. Um, however, yeah, so, so the answer is it kind of depends on the admin configuration. Excellent. And we have one other one. Um, and I would say from a demo perspective, is there anything else? We've, we've jumped from demo to Q&A, but, but this is no. great because it's for our audience. We, we love, the, love the interaction. Um, I guess I'll quickly just kind of uh, talk to, and I, I won't go it in deep, but you know, there's a lot of other things you can build out here. We talked about quick links, right? So uh, you can add quick links that will appear here. Um, you can add recommended learning into that section. So again, this is using our learning post uh, feature. And so once you have learning post set up, you can pull anything from the learning post uh, catalog into this journey. Um, and you can also set up those pulse surveys to be triggered from any of the journey accelerator stages or the life cycle event stages. Um, my colleague who owns uh, kind of the listening post functionality will be writing a blog post on this and, and kind of talking more to the configuration of listening posts and how you can set that up from the journey. Um, and then when you know, you've done that, you can enable that satisfaction score that we saw here. So you can define whether the manager or the owner can, can see this or not. Um, so I think that is, you know, there's a lot here, right? Um, there's even probably a few things that I, I missed. Um, we have a few dashboards as well. Uh, but, you know, if you have any questions, don't, you know, hesitate to reach out. So I think that's probably the, you know, the most of the demo. So I think we can switch back to questions. Okay. Well, we have a, quite a few more questions that are coming in. So I'll just um, before I before we get to answering the additional questions, and again, if we can't answer them in today's forum, we would absolutely order um, answer these and provide it in the follow up um, copy of the slides that we provide to the team to everyone. Um, let's see. We do. I want to speak to the resources slide really quick so that I can make sure that you get these links. Again, it will be provided afterwards as well. But Lucy talked about the migration guide. So for our customers that are currently using lifecycle events in Journey Accelerator. We have a very detailed migration guide that we've published in our product documentations, but there's a link um, to that. There are other um, resources as well, such as the Journey Accelerator Academy session, where we um, previously went through the configuration of Journey Accelerator. Um, there's also um, lifecycle event blog posts that are out there. Um, and lastly, there's Now Create Success pack for, for Journeys as well. Um, so we'll, we'll have all those, those links out to you. Um, but the, again, love the interaction. I think I'll just, um, I think we have time for a couple of more questions. And again, we'll, if the ones we can't get to, we'll, we'll answer later. Um, there was a question um, about can managers at add tasks or notes to multiple employees at once, or do you still have to go and add them um, to each individual journey? So as an example, if I have five interns that are starting next month, and she wants them all to get um, those those ad hoc tasks assigned to them. Yeah, great question. Unfortunately, right now, no. That is something that's on our radar, though. So um, I will ask uh, Anna if if you could either shoot me an email about that, or if you want to go ahead and submit something on the ideas portal, that would also be really helpful. But definitely something on our radar as a need. So appreciate you bringing that up. Excellent. So this question, uh, can we tailor and add some pictures to make it look more warm and lovely? Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, you can, so there's a few places you can add images uh, or there's one place you can actually add an image from that configuration. You can add kind of like, you can add an image to that uh, 
to that specific journey configuration. Um, so that's kind of the image that would appear in the header with any, with any journey. Um, outside of that, uh, no, nothing super out of the box. If you have any ideas, um, also would love to hear that uh, and see where you would like to see a little bit more of that warmness. So open to, open to thoughts on that. Absolutely. And we see the next one there. Can the journey accelerator be used to define HR services that has requirements of optional task per ge geography? So I'll, I'll try and answer that question. So, so the journey accelerator actually does not need to be, is not associated to an HR service right now. So um, the journey is if it has a life cycle event, but journey accelerator can definitely be used for geography. So let's say that you're looking at, let's go back to the onboarding example. Um, and there are a few sets of optional tasks for different countries, right? Maybe Brazil has a set of optional tasks. You can absolutely use Journey Accelerator. Um, that's a great use for Journey Accelerator to kind of build out a, a you know, a, config, a template rather for uh, those Brazil level optional tasks that will get added to any new, you know, any Brazil new hires journey. Um, and then they can work through those, right? But it's not necessarily related to an HR service um, so hopefully that answers that. Yes. And I know we have a minute left. So I think the final two questions we'll make sure to include, um, in the session, but we want to thank everyone for, um, for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, as Lucy mentioned, if you have those ideas, because we, we, we love to hear, um, the ideas, please submit those, um, via the ideas portal, but also you can send, um, any questions that you have to our live on ServiceNow at servicenow.com. But I know we have a survey that we wanted to, um, to post for the team. Um, so if you don't mind answering those for us, those quick questions. So thank you everyone for your time and your participation. We really enjoyed the, the engagement and the interactive nature of collaboration. We hope you enjoyed it and, and found out some good information. And for those that are, aren't using um, our journeys today. We, we hope that it enticed you to learn more about it. We'd ha be happy to, to speak with you more about it.